Okay, that's the worst I've ever done. I really need an in-house assistant. I'm not, uh, I'm just out of it. Thanks, Grendel. Is the voice back guys, now, guys? I, uh, I think I've got the mic on. Am I, am, I, am I loud again here? Hear music, no voice as yet. BB says, still no voice. Really? Really? It's killing me today. Testing one, two guys. I heard that. Uh, I am on. Anybody, anybody there? Is anybody there? Can hear me now. All good. Okay. Have voice. All right. So, so we're, we're just 15 minutes late. I'll go 15 minutes over. Man, that was the saddest I've ever seen. And uh, it's good that my friend Rick's here because, you know, Rick's got an assistant and uh, then he can he can witness this ugliness all on his own. So thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, I need to thank everybody for being here. The music that I was playing there is a hint as to what short history I spent the day writing on. So if you, um, if you uh, want to jump in there and guess what the short history is in the chat, I will, uh, I'll let you know what that is. I was working on all day. Um, so since I uh, totally screwed this up, I've all sweated out my old blue jean shirt here now. <laughs> um, I really appreciate everybody saving me here. Um, uh, so let me do my intro and I'll try to do it in an abbreviated version. The whole idea today is to talk about what one amp, uh, if you had to do it with one amp, what amp would it be? Uh, and why? Really the why is the, as is always, the most interesting part of this to me. Um, so I need to welcome everybody. I want to thank BB Ninja for jumping in as moderator, the moderator of the stars that he is, and obviously for saving me here. Um, and uh, I've got a new microphone and I've got a new light. So uh, if you are YouTubers and you want to talk about gear, uh, let me know. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Mackerlane guesses Lemmy 1. Uh, that's a good guess, but um, I need to... Uh, there we go. There we go. There's the first correct answer. Um, so, um, I'm doing a video, I'm working on the script for a Rickenbacker bass video. And that was the guys from Anderton's, um, uh, playing a, a snippet of Motorhead-ish. Um, I actually did a quick check and I didn't get a copyright strike from their version, uh, on, uh, the YouTube AI. So that might be the soundtrack if I can get the boys from Anderton to give me permission for use. Uh, so I'm very excited to be working on that finally, because I've been, uh, pummeled over the last couple of years of people asking for more bass videos. And of course the Rick bass is one that we definitely want to do. Um, so as I said, I've got a new microphone, uh, and, uh, clearly not a new set of hands for, uh, figuring out how to do things in the correct order, um, on, uh, on getting it going. Uh, slow mode is annoying. Um, I don't think I can change that in the middle of the stream. Uh, my knees hurt. I apologize. Um, it's, uh, set it, it's set at a minute, I think. Um, so, um, so, uh, I got some interesting questions on this on the Instagram and community posts. So I'll, I'll kind of double back and I want to cover a couple of things. Um, so, um, let me do that. Um, uh, the short, I mean, quick housekeeping, the short history series bundle is still on sale. It'll be on sale until the end of the weekend at which it'll go up to the full price of uh, 69 And I mean, it's still a bargain. I think so at 18 hours of gear. So history, so you can do that. Um, and I want to thank everybody for uh, grabbing it that has already. I recognize names in here that have picked it up. Uh, if that's not your thing, you can join the Friends of 5 Watt on Patreon. Uh, we've got 50, 10 and $5 a month levels. I really appreciate it. Um, and, um, I'll be doing a patrons only live stream each month and I'll be looking for patrons to choose topics and talk about whatever you want to talk about at the $50 level. I do uh, a phone call. Uh, if you want to do that every month, I did one yesterday with a guy from uh, California who's doing a lot of songwriting, really interesting guy, um, who's doing songwriting of like Nepalese and pop, very cool stuff. 
Um, there's always the t-shirts and the stomp preset packs in the store. And if you want to, you can throw something in the tip jar and avoid all the other percentages uh, that, that get carved off the top. Uh, remember to put my uh, at five watt world in the top chat so that I can see it. And obviously people are great about it already. People are throwing money in there. Daniel, you, you didn't put your question. Put your question, man. I'll answer your question when I get back here. Uh, we have about three to 5,000 people uh, in the hour on the live stream. Um, so um, <laughs> so uh, that's pretty funny, Sam. Um, so, um, it, so make sure I can help you see your picture, see your, see your name there. Um, so uh, as people are saying, I turned on slow mode to try to be able to keep up with this. Uh, so let me double back and look at some of the top chat questions. Uh, Alt Grendel just was saving me on uh, my uh, drop of what's going on. RJ Orthman just sent me a thank you on the top chat. Thanks, man. And people were throwing things in early. I really appreciate the questions early. Uh, <laughs> minimalist time. Yeah, I thought the phone died. Yeah, this was this was this was probably this is going to go down in the annals of uh, of ugly uh, stuff. So um, we'll, we'll try to recover here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shawnee's big Cubs fan says he owns an RK50H. I remember actually, Sean, you commenting that the RK is one of your favorite ones. Uh, it's true, Sweetwater did just become a dealer for victory. And Bill, thanks, Bill. Thanks, John. Jonathan Knapp. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. All right, so uh, let me jump back here. So um, uh, as you saw in the recent video, I've downsized from 15 amps to three or four or five, it depends on how you count. I've got a pair of champs. I've got my original champ that I built with Dan from FYD Amps. And I've got a Vibra Champ Reverb that uh, Fender just came out with. Really cool little amp, uh, great for traveling. Uh, I've got a pair of Deluxes. They're back there, but they're both Tone Masters uh, with the IR outs. They're really great and perfect for what I need them for, doing jazzy kind of things and lightweight, easy, quick to carry to a gig. Um, and then I've been testing the v, uh, Victory VC35. Um, which is really cool, um, and I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, and I've actually got that plugged in, uh, and uh, if people heckle me, I might uh, play a little bit, but maybe not after I got all rattled about coming in uh, 15 minutes late. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the hour goes. Um, so I've become fascinated with this question of one amp. So even though I paired my own stuff back, which, like I said, I really did because of the pile of stuff kind of freaked me out when I saw how much stuff I had and I was thinking about where I was going to live in the future and I was kind of thinking about how much storage I was going to need. Um, I really needed to, I really needed to, uh, to come to grips with that. Um, so uh, paring it down was a big thing, but I still, like anybody, I still really enjoy um, tasting, taste testing different amps and I end up for the one, just one amp series, I end up playing the amp for about six months uh, before I do a video about it. And that's where I am with the Victory VC35, really loving it. And I'm going to uh, end up doing that video probably late this fall or early in the winter. Uh, so very cool. Um, <laughs> and right on cue, Stan asks what happened to the Revs. So the Revs, um, you know, it's a company that I absolutely really love those guys. Uh, Derek and Dan at Rev have been amazing and have done, you know, they're mostly over in the high gain world with most of their amps, although the Dynamis uh, 740, uh, which is Robert Baker's favorite amp of all time. Um, and I'm, I haven't played one because I'm kind of afraid to because I don't want to have to have a, a big amp or another amp again. So I'm kind of in the not shopping mode. Um, but the reality is uh, I, the, the 20 series were great. And with the small cabs in particular, they're just incredible. It was a lot of fun using that rig. But they, for me, that what I was using them for, the Deluxes kind of did that too. And I, I, I kind of had both. And uh, I had to make a choice and I just paired back. Uh, I just couldn't keep them all. I couldn't keep all the stuff I loved. In particular, you know, I had uh, four amps that I had built. I still had four amps that I built with Dan Lurie, though I had built over a dozen um, at one time. And I, I realized I was building amps out of a sort of need to, you know, get in the zone. Building an amp is, is kind of like, um, I don't know, painting a painting or, I don't know, maybe it's like building a ship in a bottle. I've never done that, but maybe it's like that. You know, it's both um, aesthetically beautiful. Uh, it works. 
and it makes music. I mean, what's more fun than that? So when I was able to let those amps go, uh, it became obvious to me that I could actually probably let go of the little revs as well. And it doesn't change anything about how I feel about the company. Um, I actually was on their live stream last night, uh, showing them some support, and those guys are great. Like I said, they're just amazing, as is my friend Dan, uh, who I don't talk to often enough, but I always enjoy it when I do. Um, I think the key to this whole thing, and I'm sure we're gonna hear about this when I start looking in here, is um, the reality is you got to know who you are as a player. You got to be honest with yourself about what kind of tones you really use and need. Um, and I have people that tell me in comments all the time that they love all the different tones that they get. That's cool. You know, whatever, whatever really works for you, that's great. Um, and there's nothing that, I, you know, I've certainly spent uh, most of my life looking. I started playing with guitar when I was 14 and I'm 61. So I've been playing a while. I don't do the math on it on purpose, uh, but it's it's a while. <laughs> or as a, as a kid at a music store said to me once, uh, I, this was about 10 or 15 years ago, I was sitting on a hot rod deluxe and I was playing a guitar. And this little kid, he's like 10. Did I tell this story over here before? I apologize if I did. This kid walked up to me and he was like my same height, but I was sitting down. And he kind of gave me a head nod. And I gave him a head nod back. I think I was playing, you know, like some ZZ Top thing and I was trying to learn. And um, he goes, you're not bad. And I paused and I said, well, thanks. I said, you know, if, if you do this for 30 years, I'll bet you you're not bad either. Um, but you got to know who you are and you got to kind of find a way to to figure that out. And um, and for me, it's always been you know playing with other people. That's always been the way to figure that out. Um, so I found that condo book was really helpful for me, but there's lots of different tricks, you know, that the minimalism community has that's very helpful. Um, and... Um, and there's, you know, go find the one that works for you. And then, you know, I, I always think that favorite players, the tones of our favorite players are a big part of this too. I, I sold off my two Eric Johnson Strats and I'm working on a project guitar right now. Actually, it might end up being this one. This is a Strandberg Salen, um, but there's one like this at, with the guys at Ish and I'm having, um, I'm having a set of Strat pickups put in it. And they, I don't want to go too much into it because it's a future video topic. But the reality is it was another YouTuber, John Cordy, who I just find his tones, his neck pickup tones, his Strat pickup tones, just really endlessly, um, and really, of course, it's chord voicings, um, really, really inspiring. And so that's something I'm gonna chase. Um, and you know, our favorite players' tones are, can be inspirational, and then we gotta find our own voice you know, within that inspiration. Uh, and I think that's the key. Um, so as everybody pointed out, I, I burned 15 minutes at the top of the hour. Uh, Rick was great dropping in. Uh, everybody else is really great. Uh, so let me, uh, Scott just dropped in, uh, Scott Hack. Hey, Scott. I uh, says, just acquired an EVH 5150, but found it took a 10 band EQ to get the tone. Could do it with a Zaganator tweaker 15. That's very cool. Um, <laughs> uh, Perry says the irony of me like in the condo book was that he wasn't, he didn't love it himself. Um, and the Venus Isle is where he is at. So let me go back and see what we've got uh, kind of cooking in here. There's my buddy Bill Sanderson. Uh, thanks for the top chat there, Bill. Uh, what else is on the horizon for short histories? Um, I'm probably going to do one uh, with Bill's help on uh, Gibson flat top guitars. That's something I want to do this fall. Um, I'd like to make. I'd like to. I'm going to make an Esquire uh, a video about Esquires. I'd like to make a short history of uh, another, you know, I did, I really enjoyed making the train wreck one. I'd like to do one maybe on matchless, uh, which has had a lot of influence. I mean, right down to this VC 35 probably has some, some matchless kind of feel, if not DNA, probably not DNA because um, Martin kid at victory tends to go his own way, uh, which I really dig. The guys at, at victory have been really cool um, and sharing stuff. Um, so I'm going to scroll back and look for questions and look for people's versions. Um, I apologize for the slow mode guys, but I need it so I can kind of keep up. Um, let me say hi to some people I recognize here. Avi Eckhart, also from, uh, from Paris. We got some Paris folks in the house. Very cool. Eric Warrington. Hey guys. Yeah, it would be uh, Joe Glassy. Hey, Joe from Missoula. That's two, that's two Montanans. Is it Montanans? Is that what you say? Two guys from Montana. Um, thanks, David. David says one YouTuber, that'd be one guitar YouTuber, that'd be me. 
I'll Grendel I you five bucks because uh, you, you, you jumped in the top hat chat to save me from my stumbling at the top of the hour. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. Thanks, man. Have fun watching me listen to music. Well, that's what I get for trying to be too slick. All right, so here's here's a few uh, amp choices. Tobias Opden Brau says Mesa Express 525. I know that's actually one of Bill Sanderson's favorite amps too. I think he said that later on. Uh, makes might make the Motorhead sound even better. That could be. That could well be. That's very cool. Uh, scrolling for amp choices here, guys. Everybody was trying to save me. Let's see. Let's see. Somebody earlier said that their favorite amp was a Super Champ. I don't know how many people are aware. Super Champ is an amp from the early 80s, from the time when Rivera was doing amp design at Fender. And it actually is a 15-watt amp with a single 12-inch speaker. Um, it's But it's a champ size, slightly oversized champ chassis. Incredibly compact. Um, you know, fully as loud as a Princeton, maybe louder because of the gain structure that's in it. Um, and they're pretty rare and pretty collectible. Uh, and everybody I know that has one never lets them out of their hands. Um, Antune Hermans, hello from Holland. Hello, Antune. Good Abend. Vision Music, yes, it is tough to do a live on your own. <laughs> it's the Bill for 1949, it's, it's my software that isn't bulletproof. Short heck of the Rick. short history of the Ricky. That's right, Mark Holt. All right, high watt mini rig, nice. Vision Land, you got to tell me why. Why that's your favorite? Let me get caught up here. <laughs> Guppy says yes. Do the matchless. I think Guppy suggested that in the past. Think you'll cover low watt bass amps, Alt Grendel. Uh, you know the fact is I've uh, I had that B15, loved that B15, and and in, actually I don't know if that I guess that would be considered low watt, low wattage in the bass world because it really is about 25, 28 watts. It's a pair of 5881s uh, power tubes, um, and it's a beautiful amp. It actually was purchased by a studio from Seattle, um, and um, I, yeah, uh, history of the B15 would be a great video. Um, although the amp videos don't do anywhere near as well as the guitar videos do. Um, so, uh, Perry says if we could retain only one, he he would hold on to his Bartle Starwood. Um, and since he's got a, a wall of hundred waters, he's being very practical with that choice. Daniel Jones says his, fa his favorite would be a DSM Humboldt simplifier deluxe. You know, it's impressive to me how many of you guys, um, that follow the channel, uh, who are obviously here watching about classic gear, um, but have custom amps. Somebody was just talking about David Allen at Allen Amps. I, I've known David for, I don't know, 20 years now. Um, just the nicest guy, so helpful. Um, but a lot of you guys have custom versions of the classic amps. And um, I think that makes a ton of sense in this current world we are in. The, the custom stuff is just incredible. So that's really cool. I've actually never heard of the DSM Humboldt, Humboldt amps. Um, Simon Williams says he spent 25 years with just his PV Delta Blues. I don't, that's very cool. Uh, Matthias Porto, Orange 15. Doesn't seem to get much attention or pre appreciation. You know, uh, Orange Amps is actually on my short history list. And the reality is that's a very interesting company. I have a book coming from uh, a great subscriber out in um, Australia on Matt Amps. And uh, Matt built Matt I can't remember the Nick guy's name, but Mad Amps were at the beginning of the Orange Amp story. So I'm waiting for that stuff to arrive here uh, so I can get to work on it. Let's see here. Hey, David Good from uh, from Pittsburgh area. Torn between the Princeton Reverb and a Roland JC-22. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, I actually don't know what kind of music David plays, but you can kind of do anything on a Princeton. Roland JC-22 kind of feels like something uber clean. To me, so I guess we're gonna have to wait for David to answer that for us. 
Ivan Roman Romanenkov. I would get that wrong every week. My humble reply for all the great time. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks a lot. I thought we had a question there. Uh, Stratica says Fender Champion 600. That's very cool. Five watts with a Boss Digital delay. I assume he means delay. Uh, it's very cool. Um, excellent choice. And the, the 600s have a little tiny speaker. Uh, so you probably aren't going to push more bass than you need. Um, Brent Johnson says he has two very different Tweedledee type heads. I built two very different 1x12 cabs to go with the heads. Love them all. Yeah, two heads in, in different flavors and then two. I saw somebody put in a question about um, somebody put in a question about the Harvard. Uh, I would encourage, if you haven't seen it, to go over and watch my buddy Zach Child's video about the Harvard. And I have to tell you that um, that and also Ben Forehand's use of a Pearl City... Uh, they make a they make a model that's a 10 watt amp that is basically a Harvard, and he uses it in the studio and I think live uh, on other gigs as well. Um, turned all the way up and then controlled with the guitar in the same way people use a Pro Reverb, I mean a Pro Junior. Uh, very cool. Elian Petit, uh, greetings from France. Do you pronounce that Petit, Elian? We have a lot of folks here from France today. Very cool. Uh, Camden says he has a PV Invecta Mini and a Mesa Mark. 525. I've seen a lot of those lately. I always want to go back to a Valve King. Yeah, Valve Kings are sort of the, the sleeper, high gain uh, thing in studios. You see those a lot. So, Orange Tiny Terror. They changed the game with the first Lunchbox head. Yeah, Lunchboxers are a real, a real thing for me. I really dig that. Um, David Fernandez asked a question. Missing anything from the reissued Deluxe Attenuator? Attenuated versus a Tone Master Deluxe. Um, well, I guess not, because I actually sold the 64 Custom. Um, and the, the reality is I, I end up running my Rocket ML drive in front of... Their bo it's, in, it's on both of my small pedal boards, even on the little jazz board that runs on, you know, the analog version that runs on a, a Volto battery pack. I have a, uh, an ML drive on that. And so the fact is I have a lot of tone shaping available uh, from that, which is very cool. Um, so I, I, really, I really didn't miss it. And that's probably because I'm not playing, um, I wasn't playing it loud enough uh, to really miss it. Um, although with the Torpedo, I ran it on half. I, I've said before, I do wish the Torpedo, it has three settings and I wish that was on a pot so that it was variable, you know, continuously variable. Um, but I talk about that in the Reaver, in the Deluxe Reaver video. Um, and I, I always had a little trouble getting that balanced. Uh, so, Homegrown Son, I think, is volunteering to loan us his 67 SB14 Ampex Portiflex. The Portiflex amps are really killer. Really great stuff. Uh, Joby Gallagher says, what can you tell me about the Tweaker series? What difference tones can it get from clean to metal? You know, uh, Joey, Joey, that's not something I've played with, but there's people here who really swear by them. And so you should uh, look around in the chat and find somebody uh, from within the channel community to, uh, to help you out with those. Ever, ever on we? Is it on we? We, on we. Is an AC15C1 a good amp with a better speaker, or should I just look for a new amp? It's the ones from China around 2006. Anybody? Um, I'll, I'll speak to the AC10s. I haven't played the 15s, um, and I have to say that the AC10, I had two of them at one time, a pair that I ran in stereo. Uh, I, I find that the usable volume of a 10 is pretty similar to a 15, uh, and it weighs about seven or eight pounds less, has a 10-inch speaker. I didn't miss it. It's sort of like... It's sort of like a Princeton. I didn't miss the 12-inch speaker. And uh, if you look on the forums, especially there's a there's a specific thread on the um, TDPRI, the Telecaster forum, a sort of uh, an homage to the AC10 uh, C1. Uh, they love it. And I, I did actually put a green back in it, and I didn't like it any better. I put the original speaker back in. Um, I think those amps are amazing. And they're great at home. At, at the wattage they run, they have a master volume. They have a digital reverb, but I thought it was completely usable. Um, so I think the 10s are great, and I think they're, um, unless you're really a young man uh, and you don't care how much you carry around, um, then um, you might look at the 10s instead of the 15s. They're also a lot cheaper, uh, and you can pick them up used, so they're very cool. All right. 
Wow, I got a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of people here. That's great. Uh, Top load tally says he's got a monoprice right 15 1, 15 and 1. Amazing for 249. There you go. Mark 5 V55. Ah, BV saving me on the Humboldt thing, telling me it's an amp, amp sim in a box. Oh, fascinating. We're going to have to talk about that offline. Steve Seeger says he chooses the Rev D20 as a bass player friend, reckon it sounds like a Van. Hmm, wow, very cool, like a Van Wielden. That's, that's saying a lot. Music Therapy recently played through a Supro Delta King 12, 15 watts, 112. Really nice little killer, killer little amp, he says. Wagner DT50, 212, very heavy, but easy to keep up with the drummer. Depends on the drummer, right? Radek Adrushkovic. Adrushkovic. That's pretty close, yeah? Radek, is that close? I live from Poland. I can't decide whether it's a JTM45 would suffice or if you need something higher wattage as a clean amp. <laughs> I love that. You need more wattage than you'd get from a JTM45. I built my first amp that I ever built was based on a series home kit and it was a JCM 800 hand wired. Um, it was one of the best clean sounds into the low input I've ever heard. It was a pair a 212 cabinet that I had that was a vintage 30 and a greenback combo. And uh, it, it was an amazing, amazing clean sound. It was the closest thing I ever had to getting the tones from the very first uh, Pat Metheny record. Uh, I just couldn't get over the clean room, headroom at, you know, room, bedroom volumes. It was just a tremendous. I think, I think the whole Marshall clean tone thing is worthy of a video. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a thing and people, people don't talk enough about it. David Munoz says, Munoz says he's got an eye on the blacked out tweed mojo tone. Yeah. I've actually talked to those guys and told them not to send me one. Cause I, I, I don't want to get sucked into that right now. Maybe that'll be the next, um, just one amp trial. Bartle Roseland. Yeah, a lot of love for Bartle here. It's hard to hard to not. Uh, Guitar Progress uh, says he uses a Fender Blues Junior with an Eminence Cannabis Rex. Very nice, very versatile. Yeah, Blues Juniors are killer. B. Thalco says, love the channel. Ever thought of doing Trainer Yorkville? video. Some big names use them over the years. So uh, I don't know if, how many folks know this, but uh, Trainer Yorkville's a Canadian company. Um, Trainer goes way back uh, and didn't just make copies, actually built some really, um, some really innovative amps to the point where custom builders often incorporated. I mentioned earlier that I built an amp that Dan designed, that Dan Lurie designed, um, that had a, a custom um, phase inverter in it. And according to Dan, he used the phase inverter out of a trainer YB. I think it's called the YB1. Uh, and it gave him more clean headroom before the thing started to break up. Um, so trainers sort of on the list. I, some of the these companies are a little tough to find information on. Um, even, I, I, even when I did the Rickenbacker 12 video, I wanted to talk about the double necks. Well, so few were built, I couldn't find any photographs of them. So it was, you can't really kind of do that um, if you... Um, <laughs> uh, if you, um, I'm laughing at a question that, uh, that's here. I'll, I'll cover in a minute here from bill 1949. Um, uh, I lost my, I see, I lost my place. I can't think anyway. So the trader video might be hard to do because it might be hard to find the images, let alone good articles about the history. Um, and also I'm in upstate New York now, so I'm further from Canada. Um, so I might have to enlist friends of mine from Montreal and Toronto, um, to help me out with that. Um, all right. So, uh, always off track, always, always willing to be pulled off track. Bill 59 says, how many denim shirts do you own? And you prefer vintage versus new. Uh, these are all new ish shirts. This is an older kind of ratted out one. I own three, but I keep one that I only use for filming. Um, but today we're casual. This is just friends today. So, uh, this is, this is not that. So I just have three of them. I actually bought some new ones. They weren't the same. So I'm sort of in the market for the perfect, um, denim shirt guys. So, uh, if you have a line on those and they're not $300, um, uh, let me know. Let's see. Birds 1846 says, have I looked into the Barry Harris sixth dim system? 
I haven't. Barry Harris is sort of beyond my, uh, Barry Harris is a jazz guy who's famous as a jazz educator, everybody. And um, frankly, he's way beyond my level of theory. I'm dyslexic enough that theory uh, has always been a challenge for me. Of course, I'm saying that probably kind of reinforces the fact that it isn't um, something, I should, something I should work on. Uh, Steve Barry says he's got a trainer, YGM3, 1970, great amp. Yeah, like I said, those old trainers are really good. Valentin Filipov, hi from the Ukraine. Hey. Man, a lot of questions today. David Lavalle says he's got a Milkman Creamer and the Allen... A David Allen hot fudge with nuts I've built that he built both of those. I guess he didn't build the creamer. Um, I've never played the Milkman amps, but I've heard good things. They're really very much Fender copies with really nice components. Um, so, I watch stuff six says somewhat lesser known, but the PRS two channel custom 20 has a great channel is a great amp. Cool. Come on guys. You got to tell me why. Not just that you like the tone, but what is it about those? Um, <laughs> um, what is it about your, the amp that you choose? That's the one. Uh, Michael Westbrook. Hey, Michael. Michael says that the cheap way to go is at Western stores. Yeah, you're right. I should probably go back to my horse riding roots from my my childhood and and look at um, look at you know gear stores for for ranches. I'll talk to Bill Sanderson from Montana. Or Joe Glassy from Montana. Find out who's got that. Jake Brandon, 25. What's the best low volume amp in your opinion? Huh, that's funny. So I just got uh, a response from one of my favorite subscribers in Paris, uh, David Chase Lopes, who has um, a JTM-1. Uh, they don't build them, but there's other people that they don't build them, but other people build them. Um, and that's very cool. Um, so... Uh, that's one of the choices. I think five waters are obviously from the name of the channel. Very cool. Um, oh, hey, Ben Fletcher, everybody. Ben Fletcher is a great YouTuber from the UK in the sort of southwest corner of the UK, out near John Cordy, actually, though I don't I don't think they hang out as much as I think they should. Um, ben says, I think it's almost more economical to have two amps in different styles to stop you from going back and forth between, say, a Marshall and a Fender. Ben, remind us all of what it is you're playing now. Ben's a great slide player, uh, plays a Les Paul. Uh, I think it's a 2007 or 8, the years when they were lighter because they were chambered, and nothing wrong with that, and he's got a 339. Um, somebody turned me on to Ben's playing. Yeah, it's very cool. It's a bug here. Um, and uh, I've really enjoyed Ben's channel, so everybody should check Ben out. Um, and I think he actually uses a solid state amp as a platform. So, Perry says, I missed a uh, Boogie Mark II fan in the chat besides him. Great clean amp, brutal, <laughs> really loud and heavy, stiffer than a slab of marble. Boy, great amp. Yeah, I'll bet it is. It's, and I know Perry's lives under his desk, so uh, that's a cool thing. Hey, JC. Mark Holt says he still has a Softec MiG-50. Oh, I thought uh, Josh, Josh uh, Scott at JHS owned all the MiGs. All right, well, Rick has one, too. Um, I'm going to have to go back through the, uh, through the chat later because everybody is giving me good ideas for, uh, for shirts. <laughs> uh, I can't. Everybody's always asking me to, um, to do those. Uh, the, to do a shirt, a denim shirt with a tube, but I, I haven't found anybody that'll do that for me in merch. Um, David Hobby says he got a Rev D20 for his move to New York. It's been great. Feels sort of like a deluxe reverb with a less brittle high end. Yeah, I think it's more dialable, um, but the tones I can get, like I said, especially running the EQ in front of it with the deluxe are, are cool. Um, but the D20 does that as well. Everyone who says he hasn't found his voice, but the AC15, that's why he picked it. Oh, it's used by a lot of his favorite bands. That's a great reason. I mean, it's the sound in your head that you're chasing, right? Nigel Smith, DeVille Mark II. Very cool. A lot of book, a lot of Mesa Mark IIs, the 25, Mark V 25s and 35s here. A lot of them. Oh, I was just reading something about an Origin 20 and it skipped. Sean Brooks, 
He sold his Origin 20 to buy a Studio Vintage and ended up hating the Studio Vintage. Consider buying another Origin, maybe the 50 this time. Really? I've never played the Studio Vintage 20s, but I heard good things. I wonder, huh, that's interesting. It's, I'm sorry to hear you say that because I've heard good things about those amps. Let's see. L&M Guitar Center. If I had to sell all the amps but one, I might keep the Angle Iron Ball. Two great channels that cover my bases. Clean channel goes to a good classic lock crunch sound, but just lot, but just live could just live on that one channel. That's it. Ryan says just one amp. The only tube amp on the market that I know that does it. Marshall Fender and Vox is the third power kitchen sink. Six V E L. I've actually had that in the comments. Maybe it was Ryan that commented, uh, but the third power kitchen sink was one of those that I've seen a bunch about that. Uh, Steve Resendez says you should try a Bad Cat Cub 15R has switchable EF86 and 12A7 preamps. Yeah, I mean, the Bad Cat guys are coming out of that Matchless vibe. Uh, Matchless is doing a 15 water. Uh, somebody mentioned it, a C15 as well. Um, James Figueres says, yeah, the AC10 for the reason I mentioned. Yeah, I think it does it. A milk and dairy man, dairy air. Patrick Nielsen asks, would it be smarter to get something like an FM9, Quad Cortex, or Helix? Smarter than what, one amp? Um, I, think, I think it comes down to wrestling with, um, I think the modeling world keeps you from having to look at definitions of what kind of tone you get. Now, if you wanna make a lot of different recorded sounds, you can't beat it. And, and I'm a guy with a stomp, you know, limited edition white stomp right there on the floor. Um, so, uh, I have that box checked as well. Um, I'm not gigging. I'm not in a cover band. I think if you were in those situations, it's really pretty hard to not end up with an FM three on the floor or a, um, uh, or, or a helix. Uh, I love the helix world as well. Uh, I think the quad cortex, from what I understand from John Cordy, they're still getting their stuff together, but it's uh, coming on fast. Excuse me. Um, Anthony's music wants to know what I think of the 57 champ reissue. I haven't, I haven't played him, Anthony. Sorry. Tim Baxter's talking about one of the super champ X2 tube on one side valve on the other. I actually had a friend that had one of those in his rehearsal space and they are great. They're a real deal amp. Uh, I haven't played Tony Gann. I haven't played a V40 Duchess from victory. Um, but I have heard that that actually is an amazing baseline. Joe Russo, PV Windsor Studio, $200. What speaker would you recommend? I, I have every vintage Jensen there is. I'd actually start with, I'm kind of a Celestian guy and I don't know that amp well enough um, to give you advice, but if you want to email me, we can kick it around. I'm glad to help in any way I can at a distance. Emilio Conessa says, Mesa Lone Star Special is a chameleon, but too damn heavy. Huh, yeah, I find the Mesas to be pretty heavy. Reed Dillashaw, my old buddy Reed, at the risk of being an amp heretic, I'm moving away from amps and pedals and researching line six and Kempers. Yeah, that's the world we're in right now, Reed. Wow, a lot of stuff here now all of a sudden. Christopher Vincent, people are rolling in here at the end. Tone Master Deluxe, I agree with you. More Kubel says the kitchen sink head version is $33.99. Okay, that's, that's helpful. Sean Brooks, ever play the Tone King Gremlin? That seems like my kind of jam. Uh, yeah, I, ha I haven't reached out to Tone King um, to play their amps. The Gremlin would be one I'd like to try. I'd like to try their Imperial uh, too. It's got an attenuator. It feels like a real possible uh, for the Just One Amp series. Um, but again, I think it's heavier. It's quite a bit heavier. So um, that's something to look at though. Uh, Travis Hunt says he's got a Bass Breaker 15. Still digging it. Everybody People understand it's a Fender. Bass Breaker is kind of a, a martially sounding Fender. Boy, you guys are really, there's a lot of folks here. So trying to keep up. Fuchs OD30, super versatile. Yeah, there's a guy named um, Jeff Kane that follows the channel that gigs um, one of those. I think that's the one he's got. Jason Carter, I would go back with a Vox AC30. The question is blue or green back? Um, that depends on what you're going to do with it. I, I tend to think Jason, um, blue for the most variety 
although uh, the greenback is if you're I, I, you're going Rory Gallagher, although he probably used a blue because it was a vintage one. Um, it just gives you more edge. Uh, this this gold, this Celestian gold, really cranks. But I think it's really the amount of control I have of the um, mid range with the VC35 and the um, and the EQ pedal that really makes the gold kind of do it all, which makes me feel like a blue could do it all. So. All right, folks, Scott Gibbs is here. He says he's an average player looking to buy his first amp, currently using a Fender Micro with headphones, wants something that's simple, not too expensive, so his wife throws him out of the house. Uh, I think everybody, Scott, it's going to be it, the first tube amp. It's kind of hard to not end up with uh, a Blues Junior. Um, it's small. It does a great job. Um, so I uh, just had a big jump on the thing here. Wow, I just cannot keep up. See, and people, I need, I think that I need it to be even slower. Jared McCarthy says he couldn't live without his FYD March, my Desert Island amp. Props to you, Keith, for introducing me to Dan's work via the channel. You're welcome. Uh, I had a March for a long time. I actually was working with Dan when he came up with that idea. And my March was the first one or the second one that was built. Uh, and I actually sold it back to Dan and he sold it to a, uh, somebody, maybe to you. He sold it to somebody uh, through the channel. Um, it just... Uh, I, it's just a kind of flavor I wasn't using very much, but man, uh, I used to run an EL34 in it, and I think that's the way he builds them now. Uh, incredible. Incredible. Uh, Motorbike Ray is asking me about the Monoprice amps. I haven't played them. Sorry, sorry, I'm not more help. I, I'm, not, I'm not a big shopper, guys, so I'm not kind of out there. Uh, Juggernaut V2 says Marshall DSL 40. I'd say the DSL 40 along with the uh, Fender Hot Rod Deluxes are probably the two most popular amps in the world. There's no question about it. Bradley Wargos got a shout out for the Mesa Boogie California Tweed. Um, yeah, Perry actually, my my editor tells would tell you that the uh, California Tweed might be the best production amp in his opinion out there. Um, David Hobby, another D30, a D20 guy. Put a V30 in it. I was wondering if I thought the Creamback, Neo Creamback, would stack up and sound familiar. I think the Neo Creamback is definitely gives you that Celestian world um, at a much lighter weight. The V30, of course, is probably going to give you a little more sparkly. I don't know. Is it low highs or high mids? Um, I, that, to me, that's the sound of a V30, but I just found myself dialing it back um, and wishing that I had like a Creamback. So, and I think of a greenback as a high wattage, which is really what it is. It's a high wattage greenback. So, uh, Jordan Howell's asking very much on point. Do I have a favorite speaker? Yeah, the Neo Creamback is my favorite speaker. And then I find that having a single type of speaker to dial really helps me uh, do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see, I, I saw that... Um, People are giving them good advice um, on what to get as their first amp. I totally agree. <laughs> Jason Carter says he likes that I've mentioned the word edge with the AC30. You're welcome, Jason. I like it that you get the jokes I don't intend. Mr. says, I've been wanting to get the Mojo Tone 5E3 tweed kit. Saw videos by Rhett and RJ. Looks like fun. Question mark? Uh, yeah, you know, a 5E3 is a really simple build. I mean, it's really not many steps away from a, um, a champ build. Uh, and I think it's a great uh, place. And uh, Dave Honorado, who is, you know, my ultimate uh, expert on everything vintage. I always turn to Dave for those details I don't find in books because he's done hands-on with his dad and now himself over the years. Um, Dave gigs either a 57 or 58 Tweed Deluxe on all kinds of rock and blues gigs. And Dave's an amazing rock guitar player. Um, and so he really knows what to do. And he simply uses a, um, a Petros, he has a, a signature pedal with a Petros called the Dojo Boost. Um, it's Dojo Guitar Repair, um, which is a um, type of EQ. It is a parametric, that's the word I'm looking for, a parametric EQ um, that lets him do a parametric boost that lets him boost that amp that tweed uh, in that way. Uh, so, JC says the Monoprice amps are great for folks just starting out, or even if you've been playing a long time. Great entry level tube amp. 
David Munoz. Lots of things to consider. Weight, volume, effects loop, built-in reverb, and trim. Those are all a must for me. I still haven't found the one. I'm thinking that new Fender Vibroverb. I haven't seen the new Vibroverbs yet, um, but they are really cool. Uh, it's interesting. You know, I see people using effects loop, but you'd never hear about people using them in the studio, and certainly back in the day, they didn't use them. Um, so, uh, Scott Bigfoot from Newfoundland, folks. Uh, Keith, is it true that you turn on a tube amp without a speaker or load connected, you could damage the amp? Probably a stupid question, but I've never had any tubes. Uh, it's not a stupid question, it's a good question, and it is true because the output transformer of the amplifier is expecting to have a load. A um, Is it an impedance load? I need uh, Dan or somebody who knows more about why that's true. Um, but you can damage it, and um, depending on the amp design, you could actually do more damage on the amp overall. But you absolutely need to have a speaker load. Now, it can be something like um, a load box, like the Torpedo Captor X or an Ox box, and then you, you're, you're dealing with um, output level only, and you don't even have to have the speaker turned on, um, but you do have to have a load. Bill 1949 is reminding us that the Tone Master Deluxe already has the Neo Cream back. That's true. I had Neo Cream backs here, so I actually put those in my black ones. Peter Tiffany says he has a Princeton that's more powerful than a reissue, just something special about it. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do to a Princeton to actually give yourself just a little more headroom. Kind of take it to some place between a Princeton and a Deluxe. Uh, which is which is great. Uh, ben Standifer says best single amp would be a Maz 18 or 38. Best of Vox Marshall and Fender can be a chameleon and necessary. I actually find Z's amps to be very much chameleons and can do amazing things. Um, David Garrett is the perfect bedroom amp a five water or a bigger one with an attenuator. I actually find that actually 10 and 12 watt amps, so that AC 10 or a Princeton. Um, can sound really good at home, even without an attenuator. Um, you're going to get into uh, even at home volumes, maybe not apartment volumes, but a house um, separate from another building. I think you can get into a, a territory where it sounds really nice. If you were trying to do it with one amp, um, then I think you need to end up in something like the Rev, you know, 20 waters or a deluxe. And then you can add an attenuator um, if it doesn't have one built in. As I said a minute, a minute ago, you can take a step up to like a Tone King Imperial 2. It's got an attenuator built into the amp, even though it's a it's a tube amp. It's got it built in, and the Tone King attenuators you see those all the time. So the guys on that pedal show tend to favor the um, um, Iron is it called the Iron Heart attenuator? I think that's what it's called. Um, so uh, Redcom, have I tried a Serotone amp? No, I only built their kit, and honestly, I bought the kit um, and just used the board and spec'd all my own uh, new old stock parts, etc. Man, just overwhelmed with the response. Wonderful number of questions here. Really appreciate it. Gary O'Neill says he's running two Hughes and Kettner Grandmeister 40s. Love the variable wattage and silent recording practice. It's great for cleaning crunch sounds. That's cool. Very cool. Steve Moore. <laughs> I should have known that Steve could have saved me. It is an impedance load, Scott Bogfoot, um, that we're talking about. It is the impedance load of the speaker being connected to the amplifier of the tube amp. Don Boyajian, Boyajian, Boyajian. Anyway, why do the best guitars come from upstate New York? I don't know. Ask Rick Beato. Um, we, he, 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 he's from upstate. We're both from upstate. Um, I, I talk about guitar a lot. You guys don't get to hear me play very often. Um, JC, just got a tone, King of Tone clone yesterday. The pedal's great. Can only imagine how the great actual King of Tone actually is. I haven't played one. <laughs> <laughs> Perry's always helpful. He's saying, uh, if you want more headroom from your Princeton, sell it and buy a twin. Yeah, skip right over that whole uh, deluxe and uh, vibroverb level, huh, Perry? Just go right up. A man with 100 watt heads answering your questions, people. Um, ben Statifer says, worrying about the bedroom amp size is hopeless. Just get a Torpedo X and set the attenuator to low. Yeah, low is really quiet uh, on, a, on an attenuator at Captor X, and they are very inexpensive. Um, and Richard and Sarah's reminding us it's the Tone King Iron Man 2 Mini. Just got one. And they are really well thought of and very supposedly very dynamic. 
Sassy Cat, hey, how you doing? An original Fender Super Champ. Yeah, Super Champs are very cool. And as I said, I don't know if the prices are getting pushed up. There's just not many more. There are people that build them aftermarket, uh, so you don't have to find an original one. Fishy Fish, I bought a used PV Bandit recently that I am enjoying. I love that. So my first uh, quote unquote jazz rig was a pair of PV Bandits that I ran in stereo with a um, uh, Boss CE2 chorus on. I was in heaven. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And they're really lightweight and I really liked carrying them around. Bill Clement says, how do you bias tubes? Uh, that's a big question. If you're asking me how I do it, um, uh, I usually do it with Dan. <laughs> um, but if I had to do it myself, I do it with a mon with both with uh, a volt ohm meter, but also with my ears. Uh, and different amps want to be hotter or colder based on the kind of tones that you're getting. And obviously, I would be playing the amp while I'm biasing, biasing it and watching what's happening. Um, fenders, I tend to bias a little bit cold, so... Uh, Mike says the Victory V40 Master Volumes are great. I actually find the Master Volume on this Victory is is really good. I usually run it at about, I guess at about 10.30, but the gain is only at about 9 o'clock. Uh, so, BB, actually I'm running over because I started late, so you didn't miss it. You can hang out with me for 10 more minutes. So, and I hope Bebe can hang with us here. I really appreciate it. David Garrett, let's go for a bike ride in Tuscany when you're over here. Yeah, because I get to Europe so often, David, but that's a great idea. That's a nice image. PV Band is a classic lowbrow amp for hot country chick chicken picking. There you go. Yeah, Ben. Trainer, YBA1, Canadian baseman with big iron on a budget. There you go, 1960s. So I was talking about a YB1 uh, a minute ago when we were talking about that amp that Dan designed. Laney Ironheart Lion, Laney Ironheart Studio, 15 watts, three channels, runs with us speakers, and there's a USB that seems unprocessed. Yeah, you know, I just find that the Laneys are kind of hard to get my hands on here in the states. Um, but I'd love to check out the Laney Five Water. It's about the size of a deluxe, but it's five watts. I mean, it's got to sound amazing. Single one, 12 inch, uh, single 12 inch speaker. Um, Gary Williams says, "Hey, from Montreal. Hey, man." Jason Carter, been looking at Spark amps. <laughs> Jonathan Knapp says he bought a three-quarter ton pickup truck just to haul his boogie. And you got to laugh for that. There was a time when um, the bass player in my band didn't have a car that was big enough to, to tote his upright bass to gigs. And so I actually bought a station wagon and drove him to gigs for a year. Um, that's a, a very... Um, it was a very cool thing to do. And even though he only played in the band for a year, it was well worth doing. Um, when he moved away, the whole band chipped in and we bought him a case for his upright. Augustin Vidal, would you go to a jazz club alone to a jazz club? I have uh, many, many times, mostly when I was out on the road traveling. And I don't really travel for work anymore, but I really enjoyed doing that. And I could tell stories. I could do a whole, I could do a whole live stream on that. Is the Two Notes Captor X a good ampless solution? So the Two Notes Captor X actually is just a load box. You have to have a tube amp to connect it to. Um, it's not an ampless solution. If you're looking for an ampless solution to run into a pair of studio monitors or into um, something else to actually get the sound out or just using headphones, I would actually steer you towards a stomp. Um, I, and then aftermarket um, presets, which I think sound great. Uh, Archer says a class five, Marshall class five is a five watt fingers are not working very well. Yeah, they are five watts. They're a single EL84. Um, and five watts might be generalizing. I'm not sure what kind of voltage they're running. I'd have to turn to somebody like David Allen to help us decide. Uh, Santiago Ortiz says, uh, hey from Santiago de Chile. Great show, thanks man. How has Epiphone not brought back the Valve Junior? That's a great question, Sean Brooks, um, uh, because they are one of the amps that are most modded out in the world. That's for sure. <laughs> Mike Jones wants to know, what amp would you recommend recommend for air guitar? Well, it's all about the look, Mike. So you got to go with uh, a Marshall head and a 412 cab. 
just so you could, or a picture of one, actually probably would still work. Um, Pat Michaud says, your thoughts on a Dr. Z Z Rec? I've never played a Z Rec. Um, Zach Broyles from uh, Mythos Pedals owned a Z Rec for a while, and he said that um, just so loud and amazingly amazing sounding, but you really had to get your foot in it to get it. He makes a Z Rec Junior, which is not you know pure Z Rec because um, it's got a lot of the things that um, that Fisher didn't do. Um, but the fact is, it makes all those things make it more usable. Uh, so go look at my train wreck video. Uh, Pat, if you want to have a sense of that, so. Catalan Stan, hi from Denmark, has a PV Valve King 212. Yeah, and I, and Johnny Highland played a Valve King 212 for a long time. So I think it's a very versatile amp. <laughs> Jason Carter says he's looking forward to hearing Jeff Mackerlane's signature two rocks. They look great. Um, I think that Jeff's got his new little one is just a... Um, uh, a signature studio. I think it's just called the signature studio. That sounds like his, um, his bigger amp that is he's just going to carry that around, but they look amazing. And I'm, I'm sure that we'd have to wait for one and it would be great. All right. We're winding down here, folks. Uh, Dunsey's guitar world actually mentions blue guitar amps. One has been live and recording app for the last six years. Wow. I didn't realize they'd been around that long. Tiny and loud when required. It's readings from Scotland. Yeah, I appreciate that. Actually, a lot of people mentioned the blue guitar amp, and I know that Rick Beato met um, a guy. Um, the, met the guy that, that designed those, and, and uh, I checked him out when he was at NAMM, and I was really impressed. Hey, everybody, Jan Yakuts is here. Did any? Uh, he's a great jazz guitar player and transcriber, so check him out on Instagram and on YouTube. Did anybody try modeling with an AER amp as a speaker cabinet? Well, that's a great question. The AR amps are great. Um, jazz amps, uh, traditional sort of acoustic amp, really, really clean. Um, all right, final questions here, folks. I, I'm, e I'm even uh, kind of running long on my penalty time here. Ryan McHugh says you just picked up a 5 watt 1963 Gretsch 6150. Yeah, early Gretsch amps and early Gibson amps are real prizes in the marketplace. I think they're very cool. Um, very cool. Rick Mason's <laughs> stand up the double denim. Uh, Rick, uh, when I lived in Vermont, they told me that that look is a, there's a lot of people here from Canada. I hope no one's offended by this, but I heard that that was called a Canadian tuxedo, um, which uh, it's about as dressed, this is about as dressed up as I want to get anyway. Um, I, my ultimate, uh, restaurant ideas, an amazing restaurant where I can dress just like this and go there and be comfortable. Uh, Rick Castillo says, uh, thoughts on Kendrick amps? I haven't played them, but I've always heard good things about the Kendrick amps. Um, Sean Brooks, did you get to try the Tone Master Super Reverb? No, I haven't. I haven't played those. <laughs> Perry's asking the capital of Assyria. Anybody want to jump in and save me on that one? Uh, Adam Mother Heart, a guy here late. Thoughts on the AC-10? I actually was talking about AC-10s earlier in the stream. I think they're great, great little ants, amps, um, and they, they do the classic rock thing really well. Yeah, you see, Bibby knows everyone. Um, so he says Thomas Blugs is a friend of his, and I've heard amazing things. All right. All right, so everybody's saying goodbye, so it must be that I'm done. Uh, I really, uh, <laughs> Scott's it's hard to offend a Canadian. I really appreciate that, Scott. Um, and yeah, John Waller, I've been to Seattle and uh, Portland, and I agree. That's pretty much any of the English things there. So uh, I'm going to sign off. Uh, I apologize for the craziness at the top of the hour, and I appreciate uh, everybody being here. It looks like we had a really good turnout, and uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, I really appreciate everybody's questions, and I apologize to anybody that I didn't get to see. Um, don't ever hesitate to uh, shoot me an email through the channel um, at um, 5 wattworld at gmail.com. Um, I answer all my own email. I answer all the comments, as you probably realized over the years. And um, I'm looking forward to the next one. I'm working on the um, uh, short history, as I said, of the uh, Rickenbacker bass. And that should be out uh, late next week, sometime this time next week. All right. Thanks again. Be good, everybody.